Manitoba Electronic Music Exhibition. Do you think space monkeys will ever rule the world? Uh, I think they're already here. Welcome to Manitoba's Electronic Music Exhibition 2013. During this episode, the Prosper crew hits the Cube and the Winnipeg Art Gallery. You're on Prosper Street. with PSTP TV in the heart of Winnipeg's Exchange District for Manitoba's Electronic Music Exhibition. This area is rich in history, laden with 18th century buildings and cobblestone streets. The Old City Vine pairs exceptionally well with the various art mediums, turning this area into the perfect location to house the cube. The Manitoba Electronic Music Exhibition transforms this area into a festival setting with light shows and epic music surround, preparing to entertain about 15,000 spectators. The electronic music scene has taken over Winnipeg, sending Winnipeggers into overload. You're on Prosper Street. <laughs> So being a recognized producer and noted performer, can you talk to us about the difference between producing your own music and mixing? Uh, well, I, I actually I played a couple of tracks of mine tonight, which I'm trying to do a little bit more, but it still feels like a real taboo, you know, like the funny thing about producing music is you, at least the way I work, you know, it's you produce this music in this really internal space, kind of emulating your heroes in a way, that's what I do. And then when you play out, you don't actually, well, I don't picture my music being, being played in a big space. So it's just funny, I guess producing is a really personal thing for me. And then when I perform live, um, that's, that's like, frightening to me. Like sometimes I do a live set with Ableton, synths and stuff. And then for me, DJing um, in the context of these other things is just like, having your cake and eating it too, you know, like you play other people's music, you take notes and, you know, if the tune's good, then, then you realize it's good and if it's bad, you don't have to blame yourself for producing it. Okay, so this is a loaded question.
question. So what are some of the differences between the European electronic scene and the Canadian electronic scene? Uh, oh God. Well, first of all, I should preface my answer by saying like half of, half of Vancouver lives in Berlin on my street now. The European music scene has a longer tradition, particularly in Germany, you know, like it's what helps you survive really brutal winters. So it's like a roots music there and has been for a long time, you know, like mm. electronica, kraut rock, techno, was a survival strategy long before it was a commercial activity. Mm -hmm. You know, like in somewhere like yeah. Berlin, without music, without electronic music, it would be, a, it might be a, a more difficult place to live. Having said that, back to the Canada thing. <laughs> yes. Um, my very first North American gigs were in Vancouver and I was amazed by um, how uh, in tune and forward thinking and uh, kind of game changing a lot of the producers from uh, from Canada are. So then let's talk about Meme. What do you think of our Manitoba Electronic Music Exhibition? Well, you know, I, firstly, I'm very excited because I um, got off the plane and I was allowed across Canadian borders. I got banned from Canada a year ago, a year and about a month ago. Um, I, I still don't know why. And so I was kind of thinking, oh God, I, I really want to play this festival, but I, I, I don't want to be, I don't want to have the rubber gloves in Crisco. So um, <laughs> I, I crossed the thing and then they took me into the room and I'm like, oh, it's all over again. Uh, I just, I get deported from so many countries and I don't know why. But the dude was really nice. I showed him the paper and he's like, right on. Me and the boys are going to come down later. And so I guess that was about five hours ago. And ever since then, I've just been in this kind of euphoric haze. I'm drinking water as well, by the way. This euphoric haze of like relief. Um, and th this sound system was great. The set was great. I mean, it's, it's been a treat so far. Thank you. I dream to sleep. Your most embarrassing moment was first day at yoga. The person I look up to most is uh, Buddha. In high school, you were a nerd. And you can't live without. Ch I was gonna say chicken, but I'm a vegetarian. I just like the word chicken. I, but I haven't eaten any meat in about ten years. <laughs> well, thank you so much. That was awesome. Thank you so much thank for your you. time. <laughs> The Winnipeg Art Gallery, also called the WAG, houses three internationally noted collections, including the Gort Collection from Late Gothic to Early Renaissance, the Inuit Art Collection, and the Decorative Art Collection, containing pieces from the 17th century to the mid 20th century. Being Canada's oldest civic museum and the sixth largest gallery, containing eight galleries, 320 seats, and a rooftop sculpture patio. Today, the Winnipeg Art Gallery carries over 24,000 pieces of artwork representing artists all over the world. With that said, look at this place. The lights are bright, the music's right, and the Prosser crew is gonna have a great night.
<laughs> Way different, I guess. I mean, you know, there's definitely there was definitely less genres being developed at the time. Um, and I think um, if you try to compare the incomparable, that's a good question. Um, it was a period in time that was amazing for that specific period in time. If you're talking about house music um, and techno, I mean, electronic music as a, as, a, as a whole was definitely booming. I mean, there was, there was a, you know, amazing creative stuff happening at the time. However, I think um, now we have the opportunity to really like, you know, benefit from, you know, those who shape the sound of the late 80s, I mean, 80s, 90s, leading us to the 2000s. And um, now 2013, wow, man. I have to say that it's a very organic, that's the word that I have in mind every time I think about Winnipeg, I definitely see like this city that came out of the forest, you know, because we got so much green around and it's pretty amazing. So I'm, I'm definitely enjoying it. And how have the people been that you met? The people oh, very warm, very friendly. And, you know, Canadians in general, I've never had any issues with Canadians. So Winnipeg is definitely no exception to that, definitely. I would say the good thing about Canada is that you have so many beautiful independent labels here. Um, there is a strong potential for different sorts of electronic music to have a future here, you know. Uh, and, and I think I'm a proof of that. I'm one of the proof of that. You know, I'm 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 doing more of an Afrocentric sound and I'm being booked to come to Winnipeg for the first time. And you know, it's not my first time in Canada, but you know, it's my first time here. So it goes to show that, you know, the scene is very much open. Even though, yes, you guys love your techno and you love your like your derby tech elements, you're still very open and that's, that's, that's absolutely amazing. Um, my name is Andrea. I'm the librarian, and I'm from Squamish, BC. And how are you liking Winnipeg? I love Winnipeg. It's it's my third time here, and um, it's been so welcome and welcoming and beautiful. And I'm really glad to be here during Meme. It's pretty amazing what's happening. I feel like it it was the case and that there is change happening because it's true there are I'm I'm definitely the minority being a female but every time I play I feel like there are lots of women that are interested in how to get involved in playing and how to get started and more the more I travel around the more women I meet that are so I feel like it will change because now 
you know, the technology is available to anyone, and, and there really aren't any barriers for women. It's, it's an, just not that common yet. I'm not sure if there's one element that inspires me, but music has always been a part of my life. Since I was three years old, I'm inspired by being outside, I'm inspired by happenings in my life and by my friends that are all, you know, also involved in music and, and they're, they, we all push each other to, to learn and excel, so everything inspires me in music. <laughs> Great! I enjoyed really much. Really nice crowd, really nice people. Very little nice town. Were you surprised? Like, such a small city that has a big love for techno? Yeah. Yeah? Of course. What did you notice? It's like, um, yeah, there was a, a lot of fans there waiting for, for, for this event. And, um, yeah, I really enjoy it. It's, it's hard to say, like I'm, I'm following dance music like 20 years ago and um, take my inspirations from all the, from all the years, from, 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 from all the dance years, from, from yeah. yeah, make it sense? <laughs> I think that's that's the reason that I make music. So if, if something comes back, then I really know why I do this. 
So it's not the money thing or the, the venue thing, it's really a people thing. So if I see the people happy, it makes me happy. And I know then I'm, I'm the right way. Well, that's a wrap for us at PSTP TV. The party continues tomorrow at the Cube, then we're at the Pantages Playhouse. It's your host, Amanda Nichols. Stay with us at Prosper Street.